Thank you. Um, Commissioner Albert, in June, the GSA announced its plan to spend a billion dollars, that's from the IRA, uh, to make more than 100 buildings cleaner and more energy efficient. Did the, GA, the G, GSA look at the space utilization rates for each of those buildings to determine whether this is the best use of our dollars? Absolutely. So over for the, for the past year, what we have been doing is looking through our entire inventory, identifying what we call segmenting the inventory into core assets. These are assets that the federal government should uh, reinvest in because it serves a special need for the federal government. We've also identified uh, candidates for disposition. And then, um, you know, there's kind of the bulk, if you will, uh, of the assets that we are transitioning through. Those hundred uh, buildings that were uh, proposed um, and that we're moving forward with um, improving through Investment Reduction Act, uh, sorry, Inflation Reduction Act funds uh, are core assets. These are assets that the federal government should continue to own uh, for over the long term and that we would be best served by investing these funds so in So those it. are probably assets that I would say probably don't need the federal building trust fund money because they've probably, they're probably in good shape anyway. Well, I, should, I, I would not conclude that. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act fund money is for very specific uses. The Federal Buildings Fund has much more flexibility in being able to um, uh, pay for moves for agencies, right. so, being able so to other improvements. Just so I understand, so the 100 buildings will, will do the emissions and sustainable technologies, but the buildings may not be in good shape. Uh, well, the... the so the inflation, Physically, you know, for room and space utilization. That Correct. It may not be properly configured. So or why, you need why a, are we doing that? Why would we pick another building that has the great configuration and, and, and you know, that you're, you're matching up both missions uh, so that you then have, you know, you don't have to worry about whether you're going to maintain them or the bathrooms work or whatever. Well, the, um, you see what I'm saying? Well, I think in terms of configuration, it's very common, and even in the private sector, that you're constantly reconfiguring space inside a building. Um, I don't consider that building condition. The building condition to me is the corn shell, is the plumbing working, is the heating working, right, is the roof right, in good right. shape. So, for example, the IRA dollars, particularly the $1 billion for emerging and sustainable technologies, is not a replacement of a roof. That would be used for a replacement of the heating um, and cooling systems to make them all electric, for example. That's the purpose of the IRA dollars. In a federal building, we may need both of those things to be true, to replace the roof and make that building envelope sound, as well as modernizing the heating hey, quick, and cooling quick equipment. Quick question on the federal buildings. You, you say a billion dollars is being taken from it every year. How much is in that every year, yearly? Uh, it varies between 10 to $11 billion a year. So a, a 10% cut. Uh, Correct. Is taken and, away. Uh, so you got another $10 billion to make these buildings right. And 5.6 of that is for payment of leases. Okay. Um, so you're saying that the standard utilization, that, that you're looking at standard utilization before you make these investments in these buildings. Um, I, I, Mr. Maroney, without a standard utilization benchmark, do you have concerns that investment decisions are being made with incomplete information? I mean, what I'm understanding is these agencies don't have standardized utilization benchmarks. I mean, are they all over the place? Uh, do some have them, some don't? What, what did you find? So in terms of the utilization measures, there is a range of benchmarks right now that are used, uh, 180 square feet, to 210, 150. It varies by agency. There isn't a specific uh, utilization benchmark, um, which is an important area of focus, I think, going yeah. forward, is to come up with not necessarily a one-size-fits-all benchmark uh, for every type of space, but some more consistent benchmarks, more consistent targets for how we measure space and how we determine what is fully utilized. Right. And then you have the situation where people are coming in two days every two weeks for four hours a day. Shouldn't they be shared space? And then that cuts the space utilization, right? Correct. If, if you Are, are agencies space. doing that? Some are. Some aren't. It depends well, on how the do agency. we get them all to do that? Uh, that's individual agencies making the decision with their in-office attendance policies of how they're going to implement. So, and is that ag done at each agency? I don't mean to interrupt you here, but I'm interested in this. Is that done at, at the agency, or does the GSA make that? Does, does GSA say you have to have a space utilization that, in, 
looks at what your commuting, your telecommuting policies, which I personally don't like the what, what we're seeing here, but that doesn't matter what I like, I guess. Who makes that decision? So the agencies are deciding on their in-office attendance. Right, they decide the attendance, mm -hmm. but so everybody's got a different benchmark then. Wouldn't it be good to have sort of a uniform benchmark to be able to make better fiscal decisions? It would be good to have, it would be good to have more consistent benchmarks government-wide. Again, not necessarily one size fits all, not right. to be overly right. prescriptive. Right, some people that don't work in the office. Right, and different types of, of buildings. Whatever. But it would be good to have better benchmarks than we have that account for higher levels of telework. Right, okay. Do you know how, approximately how many projects are uh, currently unoccupied in the, in the uh, public building service do you, uh, I guess this would be to you, Commissioner Albert. What, uh, how many properties in the public, public building services inventory are currently unoccupied? We hardly have any buildings unoccupied. We have buildings that are um, underutilized, but uh, buildings that are unoccupied usually move to the disposition list or will eliminate. But doesn't the GAO report say that you're really not moving quick enough? The re consistent reports over the last 20 years is you're really not dispensing of this property as quickly and the authorities that we were giving giving you here in Congress are not really working? I said that in my opening statement. Is that is that a true statement? I think that the, we, um, well, first of all, the relationship and how all of this comes together is that the agency is, uh, expresses what their demand or needs for space are and we supply that space. We have expertise to inform them how to identify how much space they need just to answer your earlier question. Okay. Um, OMB in the past has issued uh, freeze the footprint and reduce the footprint. That has driven over the past 10 years 45 million square feet of space reduction. So there has been uh, space reductions as a result of policy guidance. Now is a good time for continued policy guidance. Um, and at this moment, what is occurring is utilization in the GAO report has highlighted and indicated that there is underutilized space, particularly in the headquarters buildings. That is different out in the regions or field offices. You see different uh, activity in buildings um, where you see the greatest opportunity to contract is in general office space. Uh, for example, uh, the VA and community-based um, outpatient centers, that we're expanding that program. So operational facilities may be expanding, but it's in general office space where telework is most frequently adopted, where you're seeing the greatest opportunity to consolidate. Um, in order to be able to consolidate and drive the cost savings that we ultimately want to get to, it takes money to facilitate those moves. Right, you have $10 billion a year. $10 billion a year, all of which is obligated. $5.6 billion goes to paying rent contracts. Um, another, uh, about $3 billion goes to operating and maintenance. And where we're seeing the greatest cuts in our budget is in repair and alteration. About 50% of our repair and alteration request every year is cut in half. Mr. Maroney, did your report get into any of this in terms of uh, the operation or the uh, building trust fund and that's the reason we can't sell buildings and can't consolidate? We didn't get into the building trust fund. We do identify, agency officials identified one challenge is having the funding needed to reconfigure space. It does take money to reconfigure, to consolidate. Sometimes you have to invest money to save money. Uh, but we didn't get into detail about the federal building fund itself. I think that's a balance between funding, uh, Congress's funding decisions and uh, agency needs. Right. Thank you. I have one question that I can't resist asking. Um, to both of you, GSA and GAO, what is your in-office policy? Working policy, GAO, yeah. So GAO just came out with its revised in office policy a week or two ago. And it, it, there are many options, uh, but it includes a remote work option. Some staff can work remotely. That becomes their official duty location. Others, depending on their role, need to come in the office four days a pay period. Uh, and others come in the office uh, on a regular basis. It depends on the mission need and what that person's role is. So we have a similar approach. Um, we have done what we call position categorization, looked at every single position because there's so much diversity in GSA about what people do, and that is what dictates their telework status. Um, we have building managers that must come into the office every day. Um, and then we have uh, procurement specialists uh, that may qualify for remote work. Um, a vast majority of GSA employees are in what's called um, 
kind of a telework status or a on-site flexible status. Uh, the minimum requirement for that is two days of pay period. Um, and what's a day consist of? How many hours? Eight, is that? eight hours a day. Yeah, thank a, you. A standard work. Thank you for that. Um, and so, uh, but again, looking at the public building service, which is what I'm responsible for, uh, we have construction managers who have to be on site. Well, I mean, there's understand. no substitute for that. So we tend to uh, be in the office or on site, whether it's in a physical office or on a construction site. Uh, more frequently than, for example, some of our technology uh, colleagues. You know, it just depends based on the job. Yeah, thank you very much.